Hi, hey, in this short video, I want to go over the break-in instructions for your new orthotics and essentially go over how to get the most out of those devices. All right, so you really have three different sizes of orthotics that you might receive. We have full-sized orthotics that look like this. They go all the way up to the toe of the shoe. We have more casual or mid-sized orthotics. They might be thinner. They might have a thinner cover or no cover at all in order to fit into more casual shoes. For example, fashion sneakers like Converse. And then we have smaller devices that are really meant to go into dress shoes, even into high heels. So you may be getting any one of these devices. Now, in general, we're going to err toward larger devices, especially for your first pair. The reason is this. Number one, orth larger orthotics can easily be made smaller, but we obviously cannot make smaller orthotics larger. Second is they just provide more support. So especially when you are initially wearing orthotics to try and get over a specific problem, we want to get as much load off that injured tissue as possible. And larger orthotics simply do that better. There's no way to make a device smaller and still get the same amount of support. It's always a trade-off. Smaller devices fit in more shoes, but provide less support. Larger devices provide more support, but they fit in fewer shoes. Now, your orthotics may or may not have a cover. You can see in the top image here, we have a, a full length, what we call top cover or cover on the orthotic. And on the bottom here, we only have, uh, there's no cover at all. Uh, the reason we may want to put a cover is number one, they can provide cushioning. So particularly for high impact sports like running or tennis or basketball, a little bit of cushioning has actually been shown in research to decrease shock and be very beneficial. Um, the other thing is it allows for accommodation. You can see on this picture here that this person had pain under their second metatarsal head, the bone right behind their second toe, the one next to the big toe. And so we can add accommodations uh, to get pressure off of there, such as the, this is what we call an aperture and then a metatarsal pad really can do a lot to unweight that area and, and let that tissue heal. And we really need a cover on it in order to that, for uh, that to occur. Now, the downside of covers is they take up more room in shoes. You can see on this picture here, that orthotic goes into the toe box of the shoe, the, the part at the very end toward the toes. And the toe box can really vary in size from shoe to shoe and in, in, in the thickness also. There can be you know, some that are quite shallow and putting a cover on there may take up too much room in some shoes. Now, if we did not initially prescribe a cover, sometimes we don't prescribe a cover so we can easily adjust the orthotic with a plan to add that cover later on. So we can always add covers later and there's no additional charge if it's within the first three or four months of you receiving that orthotic. The other thing to notice, so we, if we're going to or err, we'd rather have the orthotic cover a little too long than a little too short because uh, we can always trim it shorter. Now, and you may also notice that the cover on your orthotic is not glued down all the way. This allows us to make adjustments such as adding a metatarsal pad like this or doing a number of different adjustments on the orthotic that are very difficult to do once that cover is glued down. So the, the plan is that we will leave the cover initially unglued and when we're sure that our device is finished, we'll add what we call a bottom cover that makes it a little stiffer so it slides easily into the shoe and also just protects the device and makes it uh, makes it last a little bit longer. All right. We're also going to make recommendations on shoes. Uh, you should leave our office or have received a, a recommended shoe list. Looks something like this. Uh, most important part of this, by the way, is the list of shoe stores at the bottom. Uh, we'll give you the, that should be on there. Uh, some just good shoe stores in the area where we think the people are well trained. Now, in general, there's a few features you want to look for on a shoe. You want to make sure it has a removable insole. That just that means you'll take out what's called the insole or sock liner. You take that out and then you'll put your orthotic in, replace that. And then in general, we're looking for shoes that are relatively stable, meaning the, the heel is fairly firm. This is called the heel counter, and you shouldn't be able to grab it with two hands. It should be fairly firm here on the back. You shouldn't be able to squeeze this too much. And the, the, the shoe, when you twist it, should be fairly stable. Now, that's a general rule. That's not true for everyone, but it, it's a good place to start, and we can modify that for each patient during conversations.
Now, I think it's really important to understand that you may need new shoes. There's no guarantee at all that orthotics will fit into the shoes that you currently own. Every orthotic in the world, whether it be a prefabricated orthotic or a custom orthotic, will change shoe fit to some extent and your foot is going to fit differently it may not even be a different size i've seen people with flatter feet even go with a smaller size because their foot doesn't splay out as much with the orthotic so you just may find you didn't need a different model or you need a wider device or you mean may need to go up half a size or a size in order to make sure you have a good fit with the orthotic what you don't want to do is put the orthotic in the shoe and find that your foot feels tight inside the shoe now we can always make the orthotics smaller to fit specific shoes, but that could compromise the amount of support the orthotic is providing for you. We'll always have that conversation with you prior to making those adjustments so we can decide together what's the best choice specifically for you. Now, when you place the orthotic in the shoe, the first thing you're going to do is take the thin sole out of the shoe. All right, and then you're going to take your orthotic and put the shoe down for a second. And yet, last I noted, this sometimes this cover is unglued. So you're going to take this cover and you're going to roll it back like this, hold it down with one finger. Then we're going to place it inside the shoe. Then you're going to take your fingers and push back. Make sure there's no gap at all between the back of the orthotic and the back of the shoe. Then you simply roll that cover down. You sometimes you need to pull that tongue up a little bit. All right, now it's down. And then you just reach in and make sure that the, the cover is lying flat inside the shoe. Make sure it's not curled up on the ends, all right? So you want to make sure that it doesn't feel like it's curled up at the end. That's a sign that the cover is too long and may need to be trimmed. In general, we're going to leave the orthotic cover a little too long than too short with the idea to trim it. Now, an easy way to trim it is to simply take the insole, use that as a template, now, this one's bigger than that orthotic, but you can use that as a template. Trace it. You always leave it lined up on the big toe side and then trace it and trim it. We'll happy, we're happy to do that for you if we're in the office, but if not, you can do that yourself. And again, that's what I just went over and how to trim the cover. Use the, in, the shoe insole as a template, line it up on the big toe side, and then always when you put it in, make sure it lies down flat. Now, if you have an orthotic that doesn't have a cover on it, so here's one without a cover at all. In that situation, you can leave this insole that came with the shoe inside. However, you may want to trim off this little lip back here. This lip can prevent the orthotic from sliding all the way back in the shoe. So you just take a pair of scissors and cut off this portion that goes up, maybe even cut off a little bit of this arch here. It's not terribly necessary. This arch tends to be very, very soft and flexible. So it'll just flatten out when, you, when your foot goes on it. But if it has any, any support to it all, just, just trim that off on that inside the big toe side a little bit. All right, now, if your insole doesn't work, meaning it's it's not an even sit, the orthotic doesn't sit even on the insole that came with the shoe, um, so, some are definitely thicker than others or have a bit of an arch, then you can go out and purchase either a Spenco flat insole or Dr. Scholl's air pillow insole. Those are listed on our shoe list. Uh, they're available most pharmacies or online. Now, Let's talk about getting used to the orthotics. Now, the, just let's take a step back and talk about the purpose of an orthotic. In general, what we're trying to do is improve foot function, but more specifically, we're trying to reduce stress on tissues that are overstressed. For example, if you have too much pressure on the ball of your foot, we're trying to take pressure off of it. If, we're, if you've got plantar fasciitis, we're trying to take tension off of that, of that fascia, right? In order to do that, we are going to change the foot function. So we're going to change force. We're going to move it from place to place. We never eliminate force. We just move it. And a big part of orthotic therapy is getting enough load off of the tissue that is damaged or under over, that is overstressed and not cause a problem somewhere else. So every orthotic has risk. You have risk of causing other compensatory problems. Muscle function is going to change. Pressure is going to change. Because of that, we want you to build up very, very gradually 
to get used to their thought, give your body a chance to adapt and make sure that if there is a problem, we catch it early before it causes a problem. Now, so this is the break-in schedule. On the first day, one hour, day two, two hours, day three, three hours, there's a pattern here. Just keep adding an hour per day until you hit about seven or eight hours, and then you can wear them full time doesn't really matter what we're doing or what you're doing as you're wearing the orthotics. We just want to see that there's a very gradual increase in the time that you spend wearing them. So once you started to wear them full time, we'd like to see that wear them full time for two or three weeks before you return to see us. And don't start exercising on them until you've worn them full time for a week. So it's about a week to break in, wear them full time for a week, then go ahead and start exercising with your orthotic devices. Then we want to see you back in clinic in about somewhere between four and six weeks. Now, for some situations, we want to do a slower break-in. We call this our graduated break-in. And in this situation, you're going to start with only five or 10 minutes on the first day and very gradually work up from there. We have a form. It's available. If you're picking these up in the office, we can, uh, you can pick, make sure you ask for it. If you are... If these have been mailed to you, then that's available online. And just send us a note through the portal and we we'll send you a link to it. So these are anybody who has a history of knee, hip, or back problems. We want you to go very slow, very gradual break in because we don't want to cause any new knee, hip, or back problems. Also, people have had a history of trouble with other orthotics. I think it's a really good idea to go slow as you break these in. Now, if you're going through the graduated break-in, it's probably gonna be closer to six to seven weeks before you, we see you back. So seeing you back is really critical. A follow-up visit is a, an important part of your overall treatment plan. So we wanna see you back two to four weeks after you received, I'm sorry, we want two to four weeks break-in, and then we want to wear them for again, full-time for two to three weeks. And we wanna see you back in about four to six weeks. I think five weeks is a good number. That's a very safe number for most people. If you're doing the graduate graduated break-in, I would say about seven weeks. Now, if there's anything that's not tolerable, the orthotics are just overly painful, you can't wear them, you're getting knee, hip, or back pain, then you want to come in sooner. Now, on your follow-up appointment, we're going to do several things. We're going to recheck the fit of the orthotics. Now, often you're picking these up with our medical assistant, and this is the first time that one of the doctors can take a look at your orthotic and confirm the fit uh, and make sure that they're functioning the way they should. So that's the next part. We're going to check the function of the orthotics. We're going to adjust them if necessary. And if, and if everything's going really well, then we'll finalize and we'll put that bottom cover on or add a cover if one hasn't been added and one is necessary. Now, as far as charges for follow-up visits, keep in mind, we always guarantee comfort on the orthotics. We can't guarantee clinical outcomes because or because orthotics are only a part of an overall, overall treatment plan, but we always guarantee orthotics and be comfortable. So if you're having any issues wearing them because they're uncomfortable or you're getting compensatory pain, there is almost never a charge for that visit. But if we are reviewing other aspects of your treatment or going over prevention of the problem, anything like that, there would be... You usually an office charge. In general, just ask us. We're, we're very straightforward about those. But we never want somebody to be inhibited about coming in, worried there's going to be a charge. So if again, if it's for comfort, orthotic comfort, um, there's those types of adjustments, almost never a charge. Now, it's normal for these things to feel weird, even a little cause some achiness and discomfort when you first start wearing them. And almost always one foot is going to feel different than the other. That's, I can't even explain why that is. Probably because one leg is just slightly longer. One foot is rolled in a little bit more, but almost invariably one orthotic is gonna feel different from the other. That's perfectly normal. But it's not normal to have significant pain that lasts for more than a day. We really hesitate to make adjustments on the very first visit or when you're picking up the orthotics because most of the time, a huge, for a majority of the time, those symptoms go away within a couple of days. 
Now, if you do feel local pain in the arch, let's say the orthotic is really feeling okay, but right there, it's just pushing up too hard, then just take a Sharpie, mark that area, and we can easily adjust it. Usually we'll, we'll take the device, we'll make it, grind it a little thinner from the bottom, make it more flexible in that area so it's not pushing on your foot quite as hard. These are very simple adjustments for us to make. We want you to stop wearing the orthotics and contact us if you have any knee, hip, or back pain, if you have a feeling like you might turn your ankle, you have pain that is worsening over time, or pain that does not go away over time. Those situations, just stop wearing them, give us a call, or go into the portal, make an appointment to come in, and we'll take care of that for you. Now, there are a number of adjustments and modifications we might add. Sometimes we're gonna do it to improve comfort. I was just talking about thinning the arch. Sometimes we'll thin it at the heel so it just sits lower in the shoe. That will do that if your heel starts to piston out, you don't feel like you're sitting down deep enough in the shoe. Um, we might do it to improve your symptoms. So we might add some sort of accommodation to the bottom of the orthotic to take, this one's meant to take some pressure off the first metatarsal head. That helps a tremendous amount for people with bunions or pain under that first metatarsal head. It can also help with, met, um, with people with plantar fasciitis. Now, we usually like to make these adjustments after you go through your break-in period. So the reason for that is, let's say we start off with one of these modifications on and you come in and you're feeling some discomfort. We don't know whether it's the shell of the orthotic, the plastic portion, or this accommodation that's causing your problem. We want to make sure that that shell is 100% comfortable first, then we're going to add those modifications. The other reason that we add them later is sometimes you just don't need them. And we'd like to keep the orthotics as small as possible just to make them easier to fit into a variety of shoes. Now, some common adjustments we might do is we might make the orthotic narrower for shoe fit. We might just grind it and thin it in this area. Uh, we might lower this heel cup back here so it slides easier back into the shoe. We might thin the arch for comfort reasons if it's pressing too hard on your arch. We might add metatarsal pads on top of the device, underneath the cover, but on top of the device. Or we might add forefoot extensions like this and like we showed you in that, that earlier slide. You may also want to get additional orthotics. Now, we want to make sure the first pair is 100% comfortable first, but some some additional types of orthotics people get, sometimes just for convenience, they want an additional pair. Sometimes they want to get smaller devices. Uh, this is a very small device for high heels. This bends so it fits into high heels, goes into flats really easily. Now, it's a very small device. It doesn't provide nearly as much support, but it'll, it will make those shoes as good as they can be. Uh, there are some specialty athletic shoes that sometimes need a, a, specially, a, a smaller device, something like a soccer cleat or a ski boot, standard orthotics usually will not fit in there. Uh, we might make a somewhat smaller device for casual shoes or fashion sneakers, again, dress shoes and high heels. Now, before we order those, as I mentioned, we want to ensure that first pair is 100% comfortable. If, if it's not, and we make adjustments to it, we can incorporate those changes into any subsequent pair of orthotics that we make. So again, we want to make sure that first pair is comfortable before you get additional orthotics. Now, the cost on additional orthotics, if we're billing it to insurance, it's the same as the first pair. Uh, if we are not billing to insurance, if you have an insurance that does not cover more than one pair or doesn't cover orthotics at all, and you're paying out of pocket, there is a substantial discount on additional pairs. Just ask our staff and they can go over that with you. You can also check with your insurance. We have a form you can take that, uh, that with a list of questions for your insurance to check on your overall coverage and whether they pay for more than one pair. That's available online or my staff can provide it for you. Uh, online, if you want to look for it, just go to our website, footankle.com. In the search box here, just put orthotic insurance coverage, and you'll see this page pop up. So you can always find that. If you have any questions and you're in the office, certainly let us know. Make sure all your questions are answered before you leave.
Um, if you leave and you have questions or you're out of the office, you can send us a note through our patient portal. That's usually the most efficient way to get a hold of us. You can give us a call um, if that works for you. Um, and if you're in the office, make sure you take home these forms. Make sure you, my staff provides you with our shoe list and also a written copy of the break-in instructions. Finally, if you want to see this video again, it is available on the website. So thanks. Let us know if you have any questions at all.